Hi, this is Leah Kirchman here. I race for Team Live Planter. Welcome to the Vox Women Cycling Show. Coming up, Lucinda Brand shows us her Vox diary. We chat to Leah Kirchman about her first Giro Rosa. Lotta Lapisto gives us her top tips. We have racing from La Course, but first, we're off to the Giro Rosa. Ciao everyone, I'm Elena Cecchini, I'm a rider for Team Canyons Ram, I'm the Italian national champion and welcome to beautiful Giro Rosa. The 11th Giro Rosa comprises 10 stages which take in the sights and scenery of Italy, from the beautiful coastline to the gruelling mountain stages. 226 riders started in the prologue in Gaiarene, including Italian national champion Elena Cecchini, defending champion Anna van der Breggen and the top UCI World Tour teams. Canadian Leah Kirchman took the win in the prologue and was where the leaders of Maglia Rosa going into the first stage. Stage 1's pan flat finishing straight was a perfect opportunity for the sprinters and wiggle high fives Georgia Bronzini, with Megan Garnier moving to the top of the general classification. The next day, her teammate Evie Stevens got the best of an elite breakaway group with an attack in the last two kilometers, which won her the stage and the pink jersey. Stage three was a long, flat route, and Wiggle High Five's Chloe Hosking outsprinted the bunch for the win, with Evie Stevens still in pink. She retained her GC lead in stage four, which was won by Canyon Tram's Tiffany Cromwell. The Queen stage of the Giro took the peloton to the famous Mortarolo with several tough climbs. Despite a crash on the fast final descent, Mara Abbott soloed to victory and took the pink jersey at the halfway stage of the tour. Good morning, just awake and um, it's uh, 8.45, not really early, but yesterday we started Giro with uh, an evening prologue, so actually falling asleep was quite difficult and I feel a bit tired still, but we'll be okay. And uh, today first stage will start and I'm going to sh show you a bit around today. In the Giro, you have to change almost every day the, the hotel, so that's quite hard. And so I had to pack directly after uh, waking up my bag to give it by the breakfast to the team. So we're getting ready for the race today and pinning some numbers. It's gonna be uh, tough to recognize my own teammates today because it's kind of traditional in Giro. We're having a lot of jerseys and it started today already with Salita in Kirby. Like Felita purple and Anna has the green jersey and Cassia has the white one. But luckily some of my teammates just our shirt. So it's after the finish and the nice thing of our bus is we have a shower. So I'm done and we drive now one half hour to the next hotel. It's my birthday and in the next hotel after the race I got a nice present. Ooh, that's perfect for the race. It's a small pocket package for under the shower. So now it's one of the most important moments of the day because after all suffering it's very important to go to the Swannies and let uh, them do the hard work. <laughs> Outside Alasio at Madonna della Guardia. The day was 
marked by lots of attacks from the race favourites. Stevens attacked on the final climb, dropping Abbott to win. She was chased by Garnier, whose effort was enough with the time bonuses on the line for her to reclaim the pink jersey. Anna attacked about 3k to go, Megan went on her, I let Mara chase some more and then I was able just to launch by everyone and then Megan was able to drop Anna so it was great. I got the stage win, Megan got the jersey, all in all a good day for both Dolman. After the stage we caught up with one rider to see how she was enjoying her first experience of the Giro Rosa. I you know it's been a, a great experience so far, definitely challenging. Um, I think I, I surprised myself by actually winning the first stage. I didn't think that that's how I would start my first Giro. And um, yeah, I've really, I've really enjoyed getting to see lots of Italy and uh, it's been some really, really solid racing so far. For the team, I think I, I came in as a rider um, with a bit more experience. Um, it is my first year competing for a European team, but it is my sixth year as a professional. And so I do have a lot of experience knowing what it takes to, to train and compete at the, the top level. So I think I, yeah, I can help the, the younger riders learn a lot. I was really, really active as a kid, and uh, my family's main sport was actually cross-country skiing. And I started when I was five years old, and I uh, had a lot of fun doing that. And then uh, I sort of picked up cycling, actually, as cross-training for skiing. And um, yeah, I started in mountain biking, and I was so hooked on that that then I, um, yeah, I just wanted to keep racing, and then the the provincial uh, team coach at the time saw that he was recruiting more girls and, and so then pulled me into the road scene and so then yeah I was doing three sports for actually a while there. So it took a, a while for me to finally settle on a sport. I was a dual sport athlete for a pretty long time and competing all through the winter and, and the summer months and uh, I was actually when I was in first year university, I had moved out to the West Coast to be on a, a development ski team for for Canada, and uh, that was sort of after that that year. I was in university and being on the ski team and still cycling, and I I decided I really needed to choose a focus, and from that point, that's when I I decided on road to just go 100% and see how far that I could go with it. And yeah, that choice worked out pretty well in the end. Yeah, I guess there's uh, different things that drive me. Um, definitely, definitely always setting goals, uh, small process goals, and then big dream goals. Uh, well, a bigger goal that that I recently achieved was, say, making the competing at the Olympics, and um, that's really been a long process. And so to. Uh, help along the way I've set a lot of small goals say improving uh, certain elements of my riding so say like my climbing and my technical skills just small things um, yeah even small goals like with improving nutrition in the races and and then when you have all those small goals then then yeah <laughs> they, they make it a lot easier to lead to that to those dream goals. So when I'm off the bike, uh, one of my my big passions is nutrition, and um, that's part of what I studied in school. So I'd, yeah, I focus in nutrition and public health, and I find all that really interesting. And um, both find the it's the scientific side of it interesting, but then I, I'm also really passionate about cooking and baking, and I'm always in the kitchen uh, trying new things. That's fun to me. Uh, so my goals for the season are definitely focused on, uh, well, the rest of the world tour. There's still actually quite a few races. Um, and obviously the, the Olympics are huge and there's even more opportunities later in Qatar for Worlds and it is a sprinter's race so yeah there's you could say I, I still have actually a lot of goals this season so it should be exciting. Don't go away we will be back after the break. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Vox Women Cycling. The Giro Rosa is one of the toughest stage races in the Women's World Tour. So we went to find out how important recovery is to making it through to the finish line on day 10. And in a stage race like the Giro Rosa, then it's it's a challenge. There's a f there's a few things the staff do uh, a great job in making sure that things are as organised as possible and that they can have as much recovery time as possible. I mean, small details like that uh, actually make a, a difference overall. The more recovery time they can have day after day, then the better overall overall it is for them. Yeah, the last couple of days have been pretty solid with the Queen's Day yesterday and Motorola the day before with a long travel day. At the heat as well during a race, just trying to make sure you drink enough. We've also been using like um, ice um, in stockings and so at the start of the race we're trying to cool our core temperature by having that in our back and then when we go back to the car to get biddens we also grab ice then. So it's little tricks that um, you're trying to do to help your body to be good the next day and during the stage. So the, the first one is when they come in, just give them the water, that's a that's a hydration direct starts after the finish, so that they get hydrated, um, to fill up the electrolytes in the body so that the muscles can work really well. So you know, so all the metabolism things works well. Um, I crashed, I think, the second day, and for me it's really hard to recover at all because I have infected wounds and I have a lot of a, a little bit fever. Now it comes uh, to stage for me better than the climbing stages. So I hope get get strong for these stages. Massage, eat, and sleep. Then I've been teaching my uh, rookie roommate that you got to sleep all the time. Every second you get, you try to sleep. <laughs> Well, we tried to, to keep a uh, good uh, atmosphere in the team and we tried to give them so much recovery as possible. And I mean, it's pretty hard because you have long travels, but we always uh, try to get the best out of it. And I think uh, it's pretty important what kind of group people you have around it, that, uh, that we keep having fun every day. Um, I have to prepare with my mind for sure, because yeah, it's all here because maybe sometimes you're more tired with your heads and your, than your legs and your body, but now it's became all together. <laughs> and just, yeah, you're just, ah, okay, we have two more breakfast here and then home, sweet home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Varazze for the Giro Rosa. Stage 7 was a tricky 21 km individual time trial, combining climbing with a technical descent into Verazzi. Defending champion Anna van der Breggen put in a strong performance, as did Italian Elisa Longo Borghini. But Stevens's time put her in first place on the day. Garnier lost almost 30 seconds, but it was still enough to retain her overall lead and to keep hold of the pink jersey. The penultimate stage was another day for the sprinters, with Georgia Bronzini taking her second stage win of the Giro. The final stage was 104.4 kilometers, starting and finishing in Verbania. A breakaway group formed, and Rabo Liv's Talita de Jong attacked the group at the top of the final climb to take the stage victory. Megan Garnier came in safely, retaining her lead in the general classification and finishing the race in the pink jersey as the Giro Rosa winner for 2016. Hi, my name is Lotta Lepiste. Uh, I'm a rider for several of Pikla Pro Cycling team. And here is my top tips for winning a punch sprint. Tip number one is that you have to make sure that your teammates are around to the last two Ks. Tip number two, make sure the communication is clear and loud. Tip 
tip number three, make sure that no other team member goes into your train to distract you. Tip number four, just be clever and smart. Tip number five, just use your chances and jump whenever you can and sprint as hard as you can the last 100 meters and win the race. Hello, I'm Pauline Ferrand Prévost from Rabolive. Welcome in Paris for La Course by Le Tour. I'm feeling good, and of course, it's nice uh, for the confidence to to get here with uh, with three stage wins in uh, in the race in uh, in, in Turingen. Um, but this is, of course, another game, and um, yeah, we'll have to see. Um, of course, I have good memories here on Champs Elysees, so um, yeah, with this in mind, I'll. Uh, We'll, we'll go open in this race. We know it's going to be hard to escape here on, on this circuit, um, especially in, this con in this, these conditions. Um, but uh, for us it's nice to have a hard race and, uh, and to see uh, what happens in the final. So we hope, uh, we hope for a lot of attacks and uh, some aggressive racing. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy to be here today. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it will be an amazing day, I think, for uh, women cycling and cycling in general. So yeah, I'm really happy. After about my shape, uh, I don't know exactly where uh, I can how I can be today, but uh, yeah, I hope we can uh, win with the team. Both of you have sprinting prowess. Who's gonna have it? Yeah, we're not gonna tell you that, of course. It's all a secret. It's all a secret here. A win for you at Women's Tour as well. So we know the legs are firing. Chantal, you've had a great season as well. Um, what I guess are the sort of game plan going into the sprint? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a really gambling sprint here. We've uh, seen uh, seen it the last two years. Um, the first year it really was a sprint finish, and last year with the rain it was a little bit harder to, to get a train done and uh, bring the sprinter to the line. So uh, I think this year it's also really open. And uh, yeah, with two cards in the sprint, I mean, it's better to have two cards than just one. So um, we're going to try to take profit out of that. from 21 teams started the third edition of La Course in blazing hot sunshine on the Champs-Élysées in Paris. There were some noticeable absentees with the Rio 2016 Olympics fast approaching, including 2015 winner Anna van der Breggen, South African champion Ashley Moorman Passio, and world champion Lizzie Armistead.
what an absolutely fantastic win for you in front of Lotta Lapista and Mariana Vos. What were your thoughts coming up to the line? Um, it was, I mean, Ellen Van Dyke took a flyer, so it sort of stressed a lot of people's lead out trains earlier than I think they wanted to. And I was just jumping from train to train. And actually, when I started my sprint, I was like, this is way too early. It was still like 300 to go. And I was able to sort of sit on Ellen and then go round her again. And um, yeah, <laughs> I'm still comprehending it, I think. <laughs> what were the emotions like coming over the line? Pretty overwhelming. And especially uh, my parents are here and my fiance. So people were, probably thought I was weird because I kept riding after the line. But I I knew they were about 200 past the line, so I found them and yeah, we all had a few tears. <laughs> and in terms of your career, what does this mean for you? Yeah, this is for sure a highlight. Um, uh, I just said that I've been knocking on the door for a few years now, you know, second, third, but never a big win on this level. And um, I don't want to jinx myself, but I hope this is a turning point and I can keep, you know, consistently getting big wins like this. <laughs> the Vox Women Cycling Show. We'll be back next month with racing and behind the scenes action from the world of women cycling. Thanks for watching the Fox Woman Cycling Show.